The Asphalt Jungle was a 1950 black and white classic. It is a crime movie, but also kind of falls into that sub-genre of heist movie. And there have been many films since then that have basically featured the story of a heist. And this is probably one of the originals. It's one of the earliest ones. And it stars a bunch of actors wasn't really familiar with, except for a couple. I'll get into that in just a second. But the main characters of the film were actors I hadn't really seen in anything, and I really appreciated that about this film. You do care for the characters. You do want to see what happens to their story. And that was one of the things so neat about this movie, is the actual heist itself maybe takes up 10 or 15 minutes of the movie, but the rest of the film is just building up, learning who these characters are, kind of seeing life through their point of view, and following their story, they're planning this heist, and as often happens in these type of films, the heist doesn't exactly go off perfectly, it kind of turns sour, and then we follow when law enforcement kind of gets on the case, what happens to these characters? Now, as I do with all these reviews, whenever I talk about movies I enjoy, I try not to give away spoilers. And in fact, I don't want to give too much away about the plot in general, because I think it's really neat for you to see it and see how events unfold. The star of this film would probably have to be the actor Sterling Hayden. He was sort of this dopey hero. Um, you know, he was the bad guy, but you kind of believe in him. You want to see what happens to him. His ultimate goal isn't just fame and fortune and wealth and stuff. He just wants to go back home again. I think he wanted to start like a horse farm, something like that. And his story was probably of everybody's, the one you follow the most closely. You see him from the beginning and you see him all the way to the end of the film. You got to watch and see because it's a very interesting and I think satisfying way his story arc comes to an end. Now, Jean ha Hagen was the actress who plays sort of his girlfriend, the love interest, but it's one of these situations where she is a woman who has fallen for the wrong guy, and I think she can see it too, but she stays by his side all the way to the end, and she does an amazing job as just being this actress who somehow sees the good in this guy, even though, you know, he can be a jerk to her, but she sticks by him, and their story was really interesting to follow. Not as much a romance as it is just the two of them kind of have this relationship through the film. Uh, Sam Jaffe was this older, kind of pervy guy. He's this cigar-chomping, smart guy of the outfit. outfit. And, um, you know, it, it was interesting to see his story kind of unfold. Uh, when you get up to the scene with him watching the girl at the jukebox, that was just like, really? I don't know. I think that was his potentially his undoing, but you'll have to see how his story unfolds. And uh, one of the character I wanted to note was Lewis Calhern's character. He's sort of this old, straight, uptight character. I think he was an attorney. And I've seen him before. I think it was in an old Marx Brothers movie. I think it was Duck Soup. But he's in this film. He's an older, middle-aged man. And he has kind of a whiny wife on one side and then he's got Marilyn Monroe as his girlfriend and that was just straight up cringe because Monroe looks maybe at about age 17 in this film that kind of amplifies the cringe but what makes it even worse is when she refers to him as Uncle Lon ew yeah and it's funny to me too when I was doing some like searches, like Internet Movie Database and so on, or even just a Google image search for the title Asphalt Jungle, you will see every single cover for this movie is Marilyn Monroe, front and center, Marilyn Monroe, Marilyn Monroe. She's literally in this film for like 10 minutes. <laughs> but they really made the most of it. It's I think this was one of her first film roles, and boy, they put that front and center on the movie posters. But she is in this film, she's 
having this adulterous relationship with the Lewis Calhern character, uh, but obviously she's in it for the money because she's always talking about wanting to take a trip and so on. And her dialogue is a little shallow. I had to write down one of the quotes just because it really stood out when she makes the comment, haven't you bothered me enough, you big banana head? Yeah, I love that. I got to start using that in sentences. But uh, you see her relationship with this Lewis guy and what happens when the police finally show up for questions and you can kind of guess the direction the film takes. John McIntyre was an older actor who played the commissioner and I thought, you know, the sequences where the police chief was giving the message to the press was really sort of timely uh, with things the way they are going in our country right now. The police chief addresses the issue of a corrupt cop and he makes the comment that yes it can happen but I believe his quote was most of these police are honest men doing an honest job and I thought that was really interesting it was just very curious timing to watch this film with the way things are going on today what I really struck me with this film is how I've seen this pattern of movie repeated many times I mentioned this before this is almost like a template one parallel I saw especially was the film Heat, which came out in 1995. It was directed by Michael Mann. It's a great movie. Um, it has Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, Val Kilmer, a bunch of really big names. I caught this film when I was working at Family Video back in the 90s and really enjoyed it. I had been a fan of Michael Mann's work with Miami Vice, of course. And now having just seen The Asphalt Jungle, I see a lot of parallels between the two and one of the big things is you know you watch the film heat it's very much character driven we care about their stories we see a lot of this film from their point of view especially and then the heist itself doesn't take a lot of the movie up most of it is just the the lead up to the heist and then the aftermath and there was an interesting parallel too with the sterling hayden character you know he ends up getting injured and that reminded me a lot of Val Kilmer's character from the movie Heat, where he ends up taking a gunshot. And through the remainder of the film from that point on, both of these actors are dealing with the physical injury that they've received and how that sort of skews their plans. And, you know, again, just the way the characters, you're sympathetic toward them, even though they're the bad guys. And that was something I loved about this movie. It's a very good film. It's in this high contrast black and white. It can feel claustrophobic sometimes when they're having these planning meetings in these shadowy rooms. And it's just kind of a relentless film too as things start to get really heavy towards the end of the film. You know, things are not looking pretty good for these characters, but you can't stop watching. You want to see how things wrap up and resolve. There's a lot of tension, a lot of drama. It's just a really good film. So if you get a chance to check it out, it's The Asphalt Jungle. It's from 1950.